Hey guys, welcome back to the cinema. Cinema Cast, our pre recorded podcast, movie reviews, and such. Welcome back to season two. I'm your host, Mike C. If you guys have yet to do so, hit that like and subscribe button down below. If you guys also are on Twitch and Kick and you want to follow our streaming channels over there, links for those are down below along with our social media on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. Be sure to follow us on there for updates and much, much more. Also, if you are on Discord and you would like to join our server for updates and much more to come, click that server link down below. So, today's future. And I've been wanting to do this for a while and I finally got the chance to actually check it out. The first Omen. Now, in case you have been living under a rock or you probably don't know what the Omen is. Now, for a lot of us, a lot of you youngsters probably look at us like boomers. We're boomers, you know, like we're Gen Z boomers. You know, I, I've seen a lot of movies. I've seen a lot of old movies. I've seen a lot of new movies. I vaguely seen or remember the original Omen that came out back in the 1970s. And I think, uh, yeah, it came out in 76. And that movie starred Gregory Peck. Gregory Peck, he was a phenomenal actor back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And, and, this, and that role was probably a phenomenal one for him as well. Now, the, the movie series The Omen, it follows this young boy who is the son of Satan, son of the devil who was born. And he's passed around, you know, foster home and stuff like that. And, and all these acts are committed... You know, they're very demonic. There's a lot of demonic themes in those movies. And there was like four movies that came out between 76 and somewhere in the early to mid-90s. There was like four omens that have come out. Then there was a fifth movie that came out, which was a remake of The Omen, which came out in, I think it was 2000... 2004, 2005. I can't remember. There was a remake for the original Omen, which was pretty. It was decent. I forgot who starred in it. I forgot who starred in it. Who see the Omen? Okay, I want to. It was two. Okay, it was 2006. I was a year off. Julie Stiles. That's who I was thinking. Julie Stiles. She played in the uh, the main role of it, along with Lee Schneider. Uh, Lee Schreiber. Who is best known for uh, playing what's his name, um, Sabretooth in the X Men movies and all? And then you got Mia Farrow. Oh, Mia Farrow. Let me tell you guys about Mia Farrow. All right, so right now she is 79 years old. Oh my gosh. I think she was in quite a few horror movies herself. Is that name? Yes, she was. She was her second role, her debut role was Guns at Batsy or ba uh, Batassi. I guess that's how you pronounce it. But she was in the main she was the main role for the movie Rosemary's Baby. And and how ironic. Not not just how ironic, but how coincidental that she was in the movie Rosemary's Baby from 1968. And then she's in the remake for The Omen. Now, Rosemary's Baby. Now, this movie I guess you could say it kind of falls along the line of the theme of what the omen is, in a sense. But Rosemary's Baby is one of those movies that has come out, and it, it, you know, her main character, she was pregnant with this child. You know, her and her husband. You know, they're 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 trying to live the life in this high rise in New York, and and they got these weird neighbors. But then she starts finding things out. She starts discovering things, and everybody around her thinks she's crazy. They're trying to diagnose her with medicine and uh, admit her to hospitals, but she knows something demonic is going on. Now, if you haven't seen Rosemary's Baby, go check it out. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but for its time, it was definitely something else. And that type of movie is used as a... Um, it's used as a, co a coincidental theme for movies like The Omen and another movie that I have reviewed called Immaculate, in a sense. You know, so there's a lot of things. And so I haven't seen the, the remake for The Omen in so many years, so I forgot who all was in it. I knew there was Julia Stiles in it, 
all I, all I know is it was just that one fucking girl from one of those uh, early 2000 movies that I couldn't stand. What was it? Save the Last Dance or whatever. I forgot what the fuck it was. You know, I, I didn't care too much for her um, for her repertoire of uh, her film her for uh, her filmography. <laughs> But I knew she was the only one in it. But you know that that was that was an interesting one. So if you want to check out the Omen, any of the Omen movies, I wouldn't directly go for the remake. I would go for the 1976 original. That's where at first that was where everything started. But no, this movie right here, the first Omen, which stars Nell Tiger Free, who's it? Nell Tiger Free, yeah, English actress. Now, there's a lot of actresses, or there's a lot of characters in this movie, you know, a lot of actors and actresses that I do not recognize, except for Bill Nye, William Nye. Now, I recognize him from quite a few movies, including, if I'm not mistaken here, okay, he was in a couple um, Harry Potter movies, yeah, he was in Deathly Hollows Part 1, but he was also in movies like Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. So that's where I recognize this, this guy. You know, he's an English actor. He's 74 years old. That's where I recognize him from. So, yeah, he's in that movie. <laughs> he's in here. So it's like, okay, I guess it's good to see somebody that I recognize in, in a fresh new film. Now, when you see the title of The First Omen, and if you're like me, you know, you, 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 you've grown up, you grew up on a lot of movies, and you're like, oh, God, they're making another Omen, like... They've already remade the Omen. Like, what what else can they do? In, in this day and age, when you're trying to keep a franchise fresh for a more modern audience and bring something back that hasn't been done in a long time, or maybe you want to breathe new light, bring breathe new life into it. I mean, look at a lot of movies that they've already tried to trash with um, sequels and prequels and this and that. Look, David Gordon Green with Halloween butchered it he fucking butchered it with a trilogy that should have never been made texas chainsaw massacre taking place what 50 fucking years after the original i mean it was a fun little movie it was fun it was hilarious to watch leatherface in a modern time butcher a bunch of these fucking cancel culture wannabe little pussies on a fucking bus and, and to see him sawing off their body parts and and nothing but blood pouring out that was probably the most satisfied i've ever felt in a movie like that at texas chainsaw mask there's no bar holds there's no uh, no holds bar i mean there's no hold bar holds bar when it comes to a movie like that you know, see Leatherface butcher a bunch of these pussy ass bitches from a fucking liberal cancel culture uh, on, you know, they're on a fucking bus. Like it starts out, you know, he walks on the bus, he's chasing these two girls and, and you got this idiot in front who, and everybody's holding their fucking phones up recording him live and, and he's like, try anything in your cancel, bro. Oh, he, he fucking canceled you motherfuckers. <laughs> That's what I loved about the new Texas Chainsaw. Other than that, it was just a cash cow uh, to bring in some money. Yeah, and of course they brought back one character, one original character from the original movie, and all. Same thing with you know with David Gordon Green again when he did the new Exorcist movie, which it, it was bad. It it was bad. I, I I watched it. I did not care for it. There may be people out there that may enjoy it. I don't know, but I did not care for it personally. Just for them to bring back um, Linda Blair, and I forgot what her name was who played uh, Reagan's mother in the original. But a lot of the, you see a theme where like a lot of these movies, you know that 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 take a uh, you know that take a, a flashback or throwback to something original from like the 1970s or 80s or 90s, and they think it's it, it's it's cool to throw in a sequel or a prequel here or there say hey let's let's see what this character's done been doing for the last 30 40 fucking years you know like with halloween like okay how many timelines does halloween have and i'm not i don't mean to shit on halloween i know there's some bad halloween movies out there and but they got like three or four different timelines to go along with it and it's confusing a lot of people and they're all like, okay, where does this where does this movie take place where does that movie take place and i have to explain to people it's like well there's different timelines when it comes to that movie franchise, and, and a lot of people don't understand what timelines under uh, what timelines mean. But it, it branches off into different directions to 
you know, give it a different side of the story. But you, you got one character that's linked to everything, you know, and it, he's just pure evil. So he's, you're going off in this direction, you're going off in this tangent, that tangent, and then you got a separate tangent, which, which was supposedly, was supposed to be an anthology series, but, you know, that didn't work out too well. Fans wanted Michael Myers back and such and such, you know? But a lot of movies like that, they seem to want to resurrect, to keep it fresh, to bring it into a new audience, you know, the modern audience to say, Hey, um, here's Halloween. We're going to bring something new and hit back to fit with the times and all. You know what I say? I say when it comes to horror movies, if you're a parent, introduce your kids to the classics. That's all I say. You do introduce your kids to the classics, open them up to horror. If you're good with them watching horror movies, Hellraiser. I was four or five years old when I saw Hellraiser on TV. Yes, it was terrifying, but I've seen the I've seen them all. Now they had this new Hellraiser that came out within the last two three years, and you got a a trans woman playing the the titular role of Pinhead, a female Pinhead, and it's like the movie wasn't too terrible. It was definitely better than Hellraiser Revelations and Judgment. I will give it that. It's something new and fresh. I just didn't. I really didn't care for it. You know, it it, it was. I watched it twice. And I, I will say it's something I would probably never go back and watch again. But you, you see where I'm getting at, you know, where they're reviving a lot of these old franchises, trying to bring them back for whatever reason, and a lot of it is not working. Now, with a movie like this, all right, the first Omen, this one actually does something pretty good, but even though... It fits the themes of a lot of movies that I've been talking about, like Rosemary's Baby or Immaculate. This movie has an 81% on Rotten Tomatoes. And it's got a 7 out of 10 average rating. So this movie's got to be that good, right? It's, it's got to be that good. Now, First Omen, this is the prequel to The Omen. And is the sixth film in the franchise. Now, prequel means, okay... What is the first omen? Like, you consider the omen as Damien, the young boy, Damien. He was the omen. This is talking about the first omen. Oh, so there was something before him. Okay, there was something going on before him that led up to his birth or whatever. This movie, the plot follows an American woman who is sent to work at a church in Rome who uncovers a sinister conspiracy to bring about the birth of the Antichrist. Where have y'all heard this before? I, I recently did an episode talking about the movie Immaculate, which was basically the same theme. It's basically the same theme. That it, it amazes me. I, I think that's like, okay, not only are you doing a prequel to a movie, which, you know, it has is 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 subtly spawned a lot of other movies that take that theme from it. All right, but it, it just seems to be a theme now where it's like not only okay, I think the the whole paranormal subgenre is kind of fading off. It's like how many movies do you got to do where it's paranormal related, where you know a ghost comes into a house and goes boo and scares the fuck out of people, and they got to get uh, all these paranormal investigators in there, and then next thing you know, it's taking you into another dimension or some shit or whatever. You know, it's like there's so many fucking movies out there. That they're trying to either revive or, or or put their foot in, put their feet into it, breathe it new life, or or give it a twist or something. But this movie, it follows along the lines of something like Immaculate was, and it takes place in a church. Now the movie opens up with uh, Father Brennan, and he presses another priest in the church about an occult conspiracy. And Father Harris is, sh is uh, shaken. You know, he, he gives Father Brennan a photograph of a baby with the name Cyana inscribed on it. Which afterward, and this is like the, the, the first three or four, the first five minutes of the movie. And you got a scene that's basically replicated from the original Omen. You know, where they're standing outside the church and then something's going on and something falls and impales the guy in the, in the churchyard. This one... He stands outside, there's some kind of construction going on in the church, and then this metal pole falls down, 
and it splits his the splits the back of his head open, you know. But it doesn't really kill him, even though it's implied that he's killed. But within that first five minutes, you know, he just turns around and you see this great big gaping wound on the back of his head, and he's sitting there. He tells Father Brennan, "I'm fine," and he just starts laughing. And then, of course, you know, title screen pops in, and then it says, "Oh yeah, in Rome, 1971," which. There's a, a big protest going on in the movie with a bunch of left wing protesters. Um, Margaret Dino, or Diano, I just call her Margaret. That's you know the main character. She arrives at the orphanage in uh, Vizardelli. She meets with the Cardinal Lawrence, Father Gabriel, a best sister Silva, nun Angeli, uh, Angel, uh, Angelica, bleh, and her fr- and her roommate. Now she's starting her first couple, you know, first starts nights of her in, in the covenant, you know, and before she actually joins into the into the orphanage or well, you know, she's staying with a friend of hers at a, at um like an apartment building somewhere in that area. And at first, it's like you know, you know, she's a nun, she's starting to be a nun or something like that, and she's not supposed to go out and and do these things and all, you know, it's like she's supposed to stay clean and 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 fresh. But no, you know, it's one of those movies where, okay, let's go to a disco. So, in the movie, her friend invites her to this club for a disco, to go to a disco and, you know, dancing and stuff like that. This is 1971. This is when disco started hitting the airwaves, you know, over there and over here. You know, because back in the 70s, you had rock music, you had pop, you had soul, R&B, you had disco. Not a lot of people care for disco, you know. <laughs> Shit. I mean, not too many people like the village people, but, you know, it is what it is. So, she meets this this man. His name is Paolo. And they start talking, and then things started happening, you know. She goes up and dances with him, and next thing you know, she passes out, and she wakes up the next day, has no memory of what happened. So, it's like, it's one of those things where you know, you suddenly know something has happened to this poor woman. You know something has happened to this poor woman. Like, she's been drunk, drugged, or she got too drunk, and she has no memory of anything, but something has happened. So Margaret bonds with a orphan named Carlita, who is mistreated, who is plagued by v- bad visions. Now, throughout the movie, you will see different things. Like, you'll see this girl that she's trying to bond with. She, ha- she talks about having these bad visions of things happening to her. She also experiences the same stuff. So then Father Brennan warns her about Carlita, saying that evil things were going to happen around her. Margaret then spots Carlita showing nun uh, Angelica a drawing of a pregnant woman being restrained moments later. And this is something that was taken from the original Omen movie. So there's quite a few throwbacks in this movie that was taken from the original, such as this next scene where nun Angelica, she is standing on top of the church somehow don't fucking know she's got a noose around her neck and she calls to Carlita and said this is all for you this is all for you before she lights herself on fire and then throws herself to be hung so it's almost similar to what happened in the original omen but the woman in the ori- in the omen she never th- set herself on fire she just hung herself but not before saying Damien this is all for you you know, this is all your will, it's all for you. So, they take a couple subtle different um, areas from that movie and they implement it into there. So, it's like, okay, I know I'm watching a movie that's based around the Omen, that has something to do with the Omen. Do you really got to take some throwbacks and add them into there? Like, okay, you don't need to be too subtle, but they want they want to remind you, say, hey, you're watching a movie that is the prequel to the Omen. But let's add some subtleties in there. But you're being too subtle about it. You're being really too subtle about it. It's like, why would you want to copy a lot of the material from the original movie to put into a prequel? Like, why would you do that? But they did. So then she meets with the Father Brennan, who explains that the radicals within the church, desperate to regain power against the rise of um, secularism, uh, which is the principle seeking to conduct human affairs based on uh, naturalistic considerations uh, uninvolved with religion. So he's discussing with her about, you know, the church 
who wants to regain power against the rise of that to seek to bring about the Antichrist to create fear and drive people back to the church with Carlita intended to be the mother of what was said to be the Antichrist. So this is a scene that you would have to pay attention to. You know, if if you're not into religious themes, this is not a movie for you. If you're somebody who doesn't understand that kind of stuff, or, or maybe you do, you're probably like, yeah, it's a little too much for me. But basically saying that the church is trying to do something, you know, to bring birth about the, the, the Antichrist, the devil himself, you know, to create fear into people who are sinning and shit, you know, doing all these things just to bring them back to the church, you know, that kind of thing. But it's like, it's almost like when you watch movies like this, it's like, does this stuff really happen in churches? Maybe not in America. Well, American churches, you got priests out there that are molesting young boys or that that's always been the, the theme or the, uh, the, the, the supposed rumor for the last, what, couple hundred years. But supposedly, I guess churches over in, uh, the UK or Europe somewhere, you know, they got these big cathedrals where they're like, oh, we got this, we got these big secrets. We got this big catacomb cave down below. It's filled with skeletons and shit. We got so many secrets going on down there. That, it's almost like movies like this make you want to think, do, do these churches, do these, these uh, cathedrals, do they really have this shit underground? It almost makes you think. But then you see a movie like this where they emphasize on, yeah, the church is doing everything they can to bring about the Antichrist. Okay, so movies like Immaculate, it's subtle, but they don't really go into it until the end where they ex do some explaining as to why they do what they do. Whereas with this movie, like... Not even halfway through, or almost halfway through the movie, you got the uh, you got the priest that's like, okay, this is what they're doing. This is we, we need to stop them, but we need we need proof to stop them with. We need we need proof to stop them with. And of course, you know, Margaret. Uh, let's see. Um, Sister Silva postpones Margaret's vows and orders her to distance herself from Carlita. She spots Paulo horrified in the street, the guy that she met at the disco, and he tells her to look for the mark before an oncoming truck fatally impales him and kills him and mind you throughout the movie she starts seeing visions she starts seeing these visions pop up and she doesn't know why until later on in the movie now father gabriel ends up freeing margaret as they examine these files that she acquired from the church they discover another baby has survived margaret locates the mark uh, on her own scalp so this young girl carlita who they suspect is going to be the omen or give birth to the Antichrist is not the actual one. Because in the movie it is implied that she is too young, she is not the one they sent for this girl who is Margaret, Sister Margaret. She has the mark on her full, on, on her scalp, under her scalp. So she turns out to be the one that they are after. She is to be the one that gives birth to the Antichrist. And lo and behold, now, I'm going to throw some spoilers in there. If you don't want to hear the spoilers, I know it's a little too late for some of the stuff, but if, you're, if you don't want any more spoilers, get out of here now. Go see the movie. It is streaming on, I think, Amazon or one of those platforms is streaming on. But uh, No, it's streaming on Hulu. I'm sorry. If you got Hulu, it's streaming on Hulu. Go watch it. Come back to the uh, review. So it is revealed that during the night of that disco... When she passed out, that is when the devil made it with her. The devil ended up mating with her and in order to conceive the Antichrist, and she has been brought to Rome as Carlita is too young. So this entire time, you know, there's this, there's this big fight. There's this big scene that's going on. You know, she's trying to escape this church, and she ends up killing off, you know, a lot of, you know, what's, what's going on. But then she ends up giving birth to this baby, she ends up giving birth to the child. Um, let me see here. I'm going to read through this because it's, it's it's so much going on. So let's see. Carlita saves Margaret from her daughter. Uh, saves Margaret and her daughter. That's right. Because it, it's been a couple weeks since I watched it. So Margaret ends up giving birth to twins. Two children. One is a boy and one is a girl. And they've always, and they said it toward the end, like, if, if there was a boy that is born, he is dubbed the Antichrist. He is the one that they took with them. And they tried to leave Sister Margaret there to burn in that church with her daughter. 
But luckily, this, this young girl, Carlita, came along, saved her. They managed to get out of there, saved the child. Um, Margaret sees her assault her, the, 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 the beast that raped her, a, de, a de, uh, demonic jackal burning up in flames. The baby boy is given to an American diplomat. Now, this is where it leads into the omen. This is where it leads into the omen. Because if, if you've watched the original Omen, um, Robert Thorne, who was the main character played by Gregory Peck, his wife was giving birth, but they lost a child. So during that, the baby boy was given to him as a replacement, basically, I guess you could say. So it was given to Robert Thorne and secretly replaced the child, which his wife Catherine was supposedly miscarried. So she miscarried, but to, to keep the feelings down, they gave him this child, and that was that. Now, years later, this is the very end of the movie, and this is where I, I knew things were going to fall into place. Margaret is living secluded in the mountains with Carlita and her daughter, now a happy family. Father Brennan appears and warns them that the conspirators, are, uh, the conspirators know that she's alive and that they will be hunting her. And then she asks about her son, and he tells her about her son. Your son's alive. And and she asks, what is his name? And he says his name is Damien. And then, of course, the credits roll. It's like, okay, now this movie leads right into The Omen. Okay? Just like, if you go back and look at movies like Star Wars, like, let's say, Star Wars Rogue One. Okay, that movie took place between Episode 3 and 4, which was A New Hope. And the end of the movie... You know, you got Vader that's on this ship. You know, he's he's killing off all these uh, soldiers, you know, that are passing along these plans that are the uh, plans of the Death Star to destroy the Death Star. And then you see a very CG Carrie Fisher, Princess Leia in there. You know, she receives the plans and, and they're like, oh, what does this mean? Oh, it's a new hope. So then it leads into, you know, the new Star, the, you know, Star Wars Episode 4. So that's what this movie is doing. The first omen is leading up into the events of the omen. So this this this, this little boy that this this sister Margaret had, she is the mother of Damien. Isn't that isn't that something? Isn't that something that how they they make a prequel to this movie, and they so subtly put it together to where it leads into the original. So now. What are they going to do after this? Like, they got the first omen out. What are they going to do after this? They can't do anything. You just let it into the original omen. So now it's like people are going to be like, um, what happens now? Is this like a superhero movie or some shit? Oh, um, the, the Antichrist Damien? Who is that? Kids, if you watch this movie, you will have to go back and rewatch the originals. Don't go watching the remake that came out in 06. Go back and rewatch the original because this is where it falls into as a prequel to the original Omen and then watch it from there on out. But this movie, it, it is so subtly is put together in a sense to where it does that. It falls into place. There is a scene in the movie, however, where uh, Sister Margaret is observing a childbirth and it might be a little bit uh, disturbing for those of you who... Don't care for that kind of scenery, but there's a, woman, there's a woman on this gurney, you know, on this operating table, and she's giving birth. And next thing you know, you see this hand, this demonic hand pop out of her downstairs, you know. And then, of course, Sister Margaret, she ends up passing out, fainting and passing out. But th this movie, yeah, this, this movie has been uh, announced and probably in the works since, God, 2016. 2016, the prequel to The Omen was announced to be in the works of 20th Century Fox. Um, by May, 20, May 2022, three years after Disney acquired assets to uh, Fox, 20th Century Studios began developing it. So it was put together sometime right after 20th Century Fox was acquired by fucking the big monopoly leftist woke fucking cult Disney fuck Disney you know Disney is ruining a lot of fucking shit I, I, that's what I believe 
Uh, the first oven was greenlit in development for an intended streaming release on Hulu, but was also given a theatrical wide release after Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures determined it needed to expand the studio's theatrical release date after shortages caused by the 2023 Hollywood labor disputes. Well, yeah, remember that. So the movie was released theatrically April 5th, 2024 and did not hit streaming uh, platforms until like a month later or so. <sighs> yeah, but this movie... Uh, oh, here, I'm going to read this to you guys, too. And this is interesting. I just came across this. Comparisons to the movie Immaculate. And I, and I did talk about the movie Immaculate earlier on, and it's just so subtle about it. So due to sharing similar premises and a common Italian setting and released at about the same time, the first Omen and Immaculate have been dubbed as twin movies. Both films explore the issue of the female bodily anatomy depicting the system, uh, the systemic control of women's bodies reduced to vessels. Bilge uh, Ebery of Vulture wondered about why should anyone be surprised that suddenly in the wake of the Supreme Court's overturning of Roe versus Wade, as state after state attempts to enact religious laws depriving women of bodily agency, America is getting horror movies about people forced into monstrous births by religious institutions worried about their growing irrelevance. <laughs> that, I, that, I never thought of it like that, you know? Like, what was it, last couple years, you know, they, they overturned Roe versus Wade, so now it's like, it's, it's considered murder to have, you know, these abortions and shit like that. But it's like, who is the government to sit there and say what a woman can do with their body, you know? I know there's a lot of feminists out there, a lot of men that are like, okay, well, what about us? What about us? You know, we had sex with you. Don't we get a choice? That kind of thing. You know, it's, it's, it's a very gray area, something I really don't cross into. It's very gray and controversial for women, especially when a man has an opinion, like you shouldn't, you, you know, you shouldn't have an abortion. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. I say, it's like, you know what? And, and I know a lot of women will sit there and say, it's my body, my choice, that kind of thing. That's when I leave my fucking shit out of it. But yeah, it is. Something like this, I never thought I, I, I heard somebody say something like that, you know, especially with movies like this, you know, where they're giving birth, they're forced to give birth to a fucking child that's a demon or <laughs> Satan himself. But yeah, that is um a, a, a nice comparison because I, I, that's how I kind of compared it to at the beginning of this review was compared to the movie Immaculate. So those two movies are dubbed as twin movies, even though they don't fall they're not really connected they're not connected story wise but they they, yeah, they they do fall into the same umbrella category they still they they fall into the same category so it's like yeah they're almost the same they're almost similar but they're 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 kind of twins so it's like you got two different movies that come out at the same time they both had the same they both had the same theme to them they both had the same subtle theme to them. It's like, when they both came out, what do you prefer to watch? Do you prefer to watch Immaculate or the first Omen? They're both basically the same thing. So what did I do? I watched Immaculate first, which was pretty decent. And then I watched the first Omen, which was decent. You know, it's like, maybe same feelings for both of them. You know, they're like one-time watches for me, I would say. You know, usually movies nowadays are one-time watches for me. You know, like, I would like to watch another movie again. But it's like... It, you got to be really entertaining. You got to be really catching to, to catch my edit, to, to catch my attention two, three, four times or more. You know, this movie I watched it a couple times. I don't know if I will ever go back to it unless I want to have a marathon watch of the Omen franchise. Then I probably would. But I think like you know the way this movie ended, it almost ended on a theme of like, eh, it's trying to turn into like an anti superhero kind of movie or some shit. You know, like. Yeah, they made that turn. They made that turn. But then they say, this is like, oh, this is the most terrifying movie of the year that you will see. Like, it's not the most terrifying movie. Trust me. You know, th this movie, this type of movie, the theme of this movie has been out for the last 30, 40 fucking years. I mean, nothing is going to be the most terrifying movie of the year. At least not this one. Now, this movie, you know, despite the, the ratings that it, gave, that it was given, I would give the first Omen a 7 out of 10. I give it a 7 out of 10, you know, unless somebody may differ and say, oh, I love this movie, I love the way it went, then, okay, there's your opinion. You may give it an 8 or a 9 out of 10. For me, I give it a 7 out of 10. What do you guys think of this movie? Did you guys see the first Omen? 
if you have let us know in the comment section what you think about this movie do you enjoy the uh, the franchise have you seen the franchise let us know and that does it for today's episode of cinemacast guys definitely thank you guys for watching thank you for sticking to the end with me um, if you guys have yet to do so, as I stated before in the beginning, hit that like and subscribe button down below. If you guys want to follow us on our streaming platform, social media, and our Discord, links for all that are right down below in the description section. Also, a shout out to our sponsor today, Dubby Energy Blend. Uh, they are advertised and sponsored by many gamers and streamers on Twitch, Kick, YouTube, whatever. It's a it's a powder drink. They got more than ten different flavors to choose from. They got different accessories on their website. Go to w.gg today if you guys wish to check out their products. If you do decide to make a purchase, use promo code AROWAN. You guys will save ten percent on your purchase. Also, we have a merch store. If you guys want to buy any of our merch, shirts, hats, mugs, whatever, link is down below for that. If you do decide to purchase any of our merch. Make sure you use that coupon code arrow ENT and you guys will save 15% on your purchase today. Once again, guys, thank you for joining me for today's episode of CinemaCast. We will catch you next time right back here at the cinema.